outlets get into this project. So we have the Sprinter W906. Um, I've had a few problems with uh, leaking coolant. Um, I think the emissions um, are giving me a flashing engine light. Um, just in general, uh, I've pulled I've pulled some of the intake and emissions gear off. It needs a service, and it, I don't think it's been touched since it's left factory. Um, so we're basically going to do the best we can to service the emissions and intake with new gaskets and seals and to clean everything up. Um, you can see the coolant's been leaking. I've got a part list. I basically went to the Mercedes dealership. Um, they gave me their generic um, intake and emissions pack. And it just come with a lot of gaskets. You can see the price was about $200, which is pretty expensive. Um, uh, I just didn't really have any choice. I just wanted to get authentic parts um, and just make sure I can do the job right first, first time round. Um, you can see there's, I think there's 11 parts all up to do the entire intake and emissions. Um, as we'll see later, there's actually, it's, the kit doesn't cover everything, but it's about 90% correct um, so it's good enough to get you going uh, so there's uh, all, all, all your parts there um, and the receipt that's flying away um, so the first thing we've got to do uh, is disconnect the battery so this is pretty straightforward um, with this job it, it's not a beginner's job it, I would definitely consider it intermediate um, or advanced somebody that's got um, a, some time and patience on their hands um, there's a lot of things you've got to do there's a lot of things you've got to mess around with and um, the way that I've done this video is basically as a walkthrough and a visual reference um, a, vid a video reference um, but you you should have the Haynes manual or a service manual for this car to do this job um, unless you, unless you're a quite a well seasoned mechanic or DIY person because um, there's a lot of stages you've got to go through. Um, I've just shown you a few of the basic parts you need to remove to make enough space to get to the um, the EGR cooler and the EGR valve and the rest of the intake manifold. Um, I can't stress enough that you need space to do this job. Um, you need to drain, drain off the radiator um, and you need to drain off the coolant from the system so once again I'm not going to show a video on how to do that exactly because um, you should at this stage and for this job you should already know how to do these things um, there's a lot of um, sort of beginner steps that you should already know um, here's the manual that I'm working from uh, it's the Mercedes-Benz printed van manual um, my model is the 2014 Sprinter, the W906. It's a th 316 CDI model, and it's got the four-cylinder turbo diesel engine. Um, I've just flicked to the chapter with EGR valve and emissions. I think it's chapter 4B, um, off memory. So you really should get this, get this manual if you want to do this kind of work. Um, but you can save. You can obviously learn a lot about your car and save a lot of money. Um, I'm showing here just quickly how you can quickly drain the coolant off the radiator. I've marked it in yellow, the, um, the, the turn valve, and I've just got the hose connected up there. It's a pretty straightforward job. Uh, this sort of thing you should be able to do quite easily. Um, it shouldn't be a hassle to you um, at this stage. If, if you're willing to take on these kind of more serious projects so um, I've just got the just got a quick quick overview of how I'm draining off the coolant I have to get that out of the way um, as you'll see later uh, the coolant runs through the EGR valve cooler um, so you need to drain that off um, I'm just, just quickly showing here that to, to make more space in the engine bay um, this, this, this step isn't essential, but you really should do it to make room. Um, remove the top radiator hose, make more room for yourself. Um, 
and remove the oil filter um, from, from what, what, what you'll see or if, if you want to take this job on you just have to make a, as much space as possible for yourself because um, it's just such a tight fit and when you have all your tools and things in there um, you quickly realize that things can go missing or um, you'll drop parts and it's just really hard to locate locate things so I'm just removing the, um, the oil filter there and uh, okay so let's get into it the first bit that we really got to do is remove the EGR cooler uh, so you can see here that before we even start that we've got to remove all the vacuum lines we've got to make some space to get into the EGR cooler and remove the bolts um, I've labelled everything you can see there uh, the vacuum lines that I'm going to remove in yellow you can see the extra tools that I need um, all these extension bars are necessary there's probably another way to do it but you really need these to make it easier for yourself and you can see that I'm using an 8mm a socket and I'm using an 8mm socket on the Torx head pieces because uh, I couldn't find any other tooling um, so almost through this whole job they're Torx, they're Torx head bolts but you have to use an 8mm socket and you'll quickly see that uh, this sort of makeshift makeshift tooling makes things a lot easier um, again I'm removing um, all the bolts around the vacuum the vacuum canister um, I've labeled and marked everything um, in yellow there so you can see that just make things easier on yourself um, you can see those blue tags there that I've mar marked um, with the with the numbering to match it up um, that's the EGR cooler you can see I've removed I've labeled in yellow the, um, the sensors um, there's cooling lines that have to be removed um, I'm not going to go through all of them because you really should use the manual for this. Um, I've even pulled out the, um, uh, the the fuel filter there just to make some extra space. Um, again, I'm not going to go through everything in great detail because there's just so many steps. Uh, you really should have um, good knowledge of how to work on the engine before you undertake this. And if you do have the Haynes manual, it makes it a lot easier. You can see there how I'm using the extension bar. Um, to get at the cool at the EGR cooler, um, you can see how it's really long. Um, it, it looks pretty silly now, but you really need it to be that long because you ha you have to get underneath. There's three bolts on the top, which you can see. Um, I'm just doing it there, but you have to get underneath it, and there's another three underneath, um, and you need that long extension uh, to undo all six bolts. Um, from the top and underneath um, and then once you've released the, the coolant lines and those six bolts on the EGR cooler that's pretty much it uh, you can see there a bit of water would have tipped out because the, the, the EGR cooler holds cooling fluid and then you can see the EGR valve there and you can see that spill probably where I was, where I was um, losing, losing coolant um, when I was driving so um, I sort of found my problem I've just got the EGR cooler there and you can just tip off the remaining the remaining cooling fluid into into your bucket or whatever you keep it with so that whole EGR cooler needs to be cleaned out and flushed out um, it's built up with carbon it's really sooty um, you can see the new gasket there I'm going to replace the gasket there's the part number there and what we have also is the old gasket you can see it's broken so that needed to be fixed up uh, the old gasket was pretty worn down it was pretty compressed thin so it was no good we had to replace it um, the new gasket hopefully is a lot better uh, I used parts clean, uh, brake and parts clean for the whole thing you can see in the cooler all the black carbon deposits they need to be flushed out and uh, flushed out and drained the best thing to get in there to scrub it with is a um, is a is a wire brush or a brush that you use to clean like metal straws or something like that i've just got a shot there of the egr cooler uh, uh, sorry the egr valve and you can see again 
that's actually I've, I've actually cleaned that out previously um, again it's really built up with soot um, I'm going to replace some of the hose clamps with new stainless steel hose clamps for all the cooling lines so I'm just going to refresh that to make sure it clamps well uh, you can see the EGR valve here again uh, I'm just sort of uh, opening and closing the valve you can sort of see the valve's action um, that whole thing is usually built up with black 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 soot, black carbon uh, you need to get in there with the parts cleaner and clean everything out um, and give it a good a brush um, you see I'm just removing um, the exchange pipe which goes to the mixing chamber so that goes from the EGR valve into the mixing chamber uh, that's four, four bolts that need ok let's get into this part three we're going to remove the mixing chamber and the throttle body uh, we're going to start by removing the sensor there it's just two, 